Paolo Bancaro is your NBA Eastern Conference Rookie of the Month, but he says he wasn't that good in December. And especially these last three, four games, he's probably right. We're going to dive into the first slump of Paolo Bancaro's career and why it's still pretty good. Plus, the Magic work players back from injury. It's time for Locked On Magic. You are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando magic podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And you are indeed Locked On Magic. Today is January 4th, 2023. My name is Philip Rossman Mike. I'm the expert and site editor over at OrlandoMagicDaily.com. You can follow me on Twitter at philiprr underscore omd. On today's episode of Locked On Magic, Paolo Bancaro is your Eastern Conference Rookie of the Month, but he knows or he acknowledges that he was not that great in December. We'll talk about that incongruency coming up here in just a moment. Plus... The Orlando Magic continue to welcome players back. The challenges of getting back into the swing of things for both the players and the teams. We'll get to that coming up here in just a moment. But first, we want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day, no matter when you listen to us, whether it's first thing in the morning, whether it's right when we upload. We truly appreciate you making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Remember, there's a great Locked On podcast covering every single team in the NBA. To search for Locked On and the team you're looking for, the Locked On Podcast Network, it's your team every day. Today's episode is also brought to you by PrizePix. First-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match of up to $100 with promo code Locked On. That's PrizePix.com promo code Locked On. The big news that came out on Tuesday, the news that we've been expecting, news that we expected honestly back in November, was Paolo Bancaro is your Eastern Conference Rookie of the Month, uh, and there is no reason to think that he will not hold tight to that award for the rest of the season and win the Rookie of the Year. It seems like a foregone conclusion that Paolo Bancaro will be Rookie of the Year. The interesting thing, though, of course, is that Paolo, by his own admission, did not feel that he was great in December. Only, only 19.1 points per game. Uh, I believe six around a little bit more than six rebounds per game, a little bit more than four assists per game. Solid numbers, especially for a rookie. Solid numbers overall. But obviously, the standards with Paolo Bancaro have changed. Um, I've sat here and said this, that like, look, a bad Paolo Bancaro game, he's still scoring 16, 17, 18, even 20 points points, uh, when he is not playing great, when he's not efficient. His ability to get to the line is able to really kind of boost and and buoy some of his bad games. And and even then, Bancaro has just been fantastic in so many different ways. And honestly, that's, what makes this stretch or this part of the season for Paolo Bancaro so intriguing? Um, you know, he's been a steady drumbeat of scoring this year. He's averaging 7.9 free throw attempts per game. He's doing things that no rookie's done since Blake Griffin in 2011. And yes, I know Blake Griffin maybe isn't the great Hall of Famer that uh, Bancaro's had his name among for most of the season, but Blake Griffin had a pretty good rookie year, was pretty good until the injuries really, really uh, kind of sucked him, sucked him dry. Ballo's already had 21 20-point 20 games in his first 30 games, but he is, it appears, starting to hit a little bit of a rookie wall. In his last six outings, Van Carroll only has two 20-point games, as, in, as imperfect of a measure as that is, including one game with fewer than 10 points. That game, of course the one that he was stuck in foul trouble with against the Los Angeles Lakers. Coming off a run during the six-game win streak where Bancaro averaged 22.8 points per game, shot 44.3%, 46.7% from beyond the arc, and 8.8 free throw attempts per game. The last six games, the last, you know, during this recent stretch, Bancaro is shooting just 38% from floor, averaging only 16.5 points per game, and shooting only 5.3 free throw attempts per game, just shooting 27.3% from beyond the arc. That's over the last uh, last four or five games. The Magic struggles aren't all on Paolo Vancaro. 
But very, very clearly, he is a drumbeat for this team. He is someone that this team has come to rely on for steady scoring, for steady consistency, for the ability to just put the ball in the basket, the simplest thing in the world. And when the Magic need a basket, they could dump the ball to Paolo and generally believe that he will get them going or he will get himself going to kind of keep the team afloat. Certainly, teams are starting to load up on Paolo. You watch, watch games, watch any time he catches the ball under the free throw line, you will typically see a double team coming. You will typically see a third body ready to trap him. Teams are really loading up on Paolo, and he's going to have to learn and get better at reading those defenses. And, and yes, becoming a better passer, something that we all think that he could get to. So it's, it's, it's not super concerning at this point. But Paolo will tell you first and foremost that right now he is just missing shots. Uh, it was both Paolo and Jamal Mosley said this after practice uh, after practice Tuesday that they'd be concerned if Paolo weren't getting to his spots, if he weren't getting to the basket, if he weren't getting quality shots, if you're forcing shots. And yeah, he might be forcing some layups and he might need to make some reads a little bit quicker. But that generally feels pretty true that Ben Carroll, Ben Carroll's issue is not that he is not getting to the basket or not getting to the, to the rim or not putting himself in position to get to the foul line more. Right now, he's just missing shots. Thus, a little slump. For the season, Ben Caro is shooting 65% in the restricted area, according to NBA.com. 4.7 shots per game in the restricted area. So 91 for 140. He's shooting 52.6% in the paint overall with 5.1 attempts per game. Like, guys, this is crazy. Um, to, to have this many attempts as a rookie. He's, he's going to get, especially as a non-center. This means that nearly one-third, 32.3% of his attempts are coming in the paint. Further, according to tracking stats from Second Spectrum, Bakero averages 11 drives per game and scores 7.4 points per game while shooting 45.4% on those drives. This dude gets to the basket. So why is he struggling over the last six games? Why is he struggling or why does it feel like he's taken a bit of a dip? The reason is purely because of the shooting inside the paint. In his last six games, Ben Carroll has made only 22 of 47. That's 46.8% from inside the paint. Again, he's shooting around 52, 53, 54%. Normally, shooting 46.8%, that is a pretty big drop. Of note, two, in the last six games, Ben Carroll's made just five of 22 shots in the paint, but outside the restricted area. This is a bread and butter mid-range game that Ben Carroll does not have. Friday's game against the Wizards was a perfect example of this. And perhaps if Ben Kiro were playing at his average, things would have been very different. Like I noted in that game, Orlando still got in the paint. They still got like 60 field goal attempts in the paint. They still scored, um, they still scored 60 some odd points in the paint, but they missed a lot of shots around the basket. And that fed fast breaks that really kind of put them in a bind. If you if the Magic would, I think I think I said this on the podcast on on Saturday. If the Magic would have made half the paint shots that they missed, they pro- they would have made up 15 points. They would have made up their three-point difference. That's huge. That's a big deal. In the game against the Wizards, Ben Carroll still scored 21 points and got to the line for seven free throw attempts, but made only seven of his 27 attempts overall, including a 6-for-18 performance in the paint, including 3-for-13 in the paint but outside the restricted area. Again, these are bread and butter areas for, for him. Again, he's three for five right at in the restricted area, which is pretty good. But out, just outside the restricted area, but still in the paint, he really, really, really struggled. And this is obviously the biggest area that Ben Carroll needs to continue improving on and getting better at. Throw it a lot, threw a lot of numbers at you, but what this is all saying is that, yes, Paolo's in a bit of a slump. And yes, the only way for him to get out of it is to start making shots, shots that he knows, that we know, that everyone knows he will make. And this is part of the learning process for a rookie. And and, and honestly, this is why he deserved to be Rookie of the Month, because he is still this impactful and this important and this good, even when he's not playing particularly well. And again, this is just six games. The majority of the month, he was very, very good. So he absolutely deserves Rookie of the Month. He'll he'll bounce back, trust us. But Carroll has been fantastic. And learning and seeing how he navigates through this slump. Essentially, what is the rookie wall? We're at he's played 30 games this year. He played 33 games at Duke last year. We're at the point where he's played more games than he than he has in his entire life in a short amount of time. 
it's expected that you're going to have some struggles, that you're not going to be perfect at that. Bancaro is going to get better. Bancaro deserves Rookie of the Month. But the important thing to remember is he's still going to get a lot better. If he's the player that we think he is, he is going to get a lot better. A lot better. The big storyline coming from Magic Practice, though, is still about the players returning from injury. We'll get the perspective of a player coming back from injury coming up here in just a moment. But first, a quick word from our pals at Prize Picks. Daily fantasy games are a dime a dozen out there. Most of them do are these salary cap games. You just enter these gigantic pools, compete against a whole bunch of different people, and pray that you do well enough just to get your money back. That 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 almost always, at least when I was playing those games, felt like a good day. Well, that's not how Prize Picks works. With Prize Picks, it is you versus the numbers. It is your skill against the numbers, and it is your chance to win a ton of money. The way Prize Picks works is you pick two to six players, and if they score more or less than their Prize Picks projections, you can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. So let's say you believe Paolo Bancaro will get past 20 points tonight. You say that he'll do better than 20 points tonight. If you think that, you know, I, I, I don't know who's, who's playing, but if, if, you, if you think Luka Doncic is about to have another 50-point game, you make, that guess, you make that prediction against the projections. There's no competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections. And Prize Picks offers projections on any sport you watch, including NBA, NFL, NHL, college bas- basketball, college football, women's college basketball, and a whole lot more. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's really that easy. Safe and fast withdrawals is currently operational in more than 30 states, including here in Florida and Canada, too. Download the Prize Picks app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports today. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match of up to $100 with promo code locked on. If you deposit $100, Prize Picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, Prize Picks will give you $50. So don't forget to enter promo code LOCKEDON and sign up for an instant deposit match of up to $100. Obviously, you know, the Magic got two really good days of practice in. Um, It's very rare that a team has this extended time off in the middle of the season, and maybe the league's worked its way to to get at least one of these in, but the Magic had a chance to, as, as, you know, I think... Wendell Carter put it, as Jamal Mosley put it on, on Monday and Tuesday, had a chance to sort of reset themselves, to co- sort of wind the clock back and har- and reaffirm some things that, they, that, that they've let slip, and more importantly, get some injured players back into the fold and get some injured players back, uh, back kind of going with this team. Monday's practice was about getting up and down. The team scrimmaged, they did five on five, and Obviously, the big news coming out of that was Jonathan Isaac and Jalen Suggs both participated in in those scrimmages. Five, uh, uh, image, uh, participated in those scrimmages uh, full go um, and seemed to be very, very close to returning. It's it's going to happen, everyone. I know it's mythical. It's going to happen. Um, whether Suggs ends up coming back on this West Coast trip, whether they wait for Isaac when they come back from the West Coast trip, or whether it's even tomorrow night, who knows. Um they're very, very close to returning, and, and it's going to happen sooner uh, than later. The issue, though, is, as it always is, is about recovery and getting back to full health. So while Monday was a scrimmage day, Tuesday was more of a rest day, was more of an instruction and teaching day to kind of, again, firm up the foundations for this team and get them ready for the rest of the season. Sometimes, though, I, I do think it's worth remembering and worth taking a step back that returning from injury and getting back into rhythm is very much a process. It is very much uh, something that is not a straight line, something that each individual player responds to differently, and something that can be difficult for a coaching staff to manage and a coaching staff to handle and, and deal with. Um, you know, this is it. I, I always have to, you know, I think I think like video games are great, and I think the way that we look at these things is all great. But the one thing that like NBA 2K will never be able to simulate is managing a person coming back from an injury, managing a, a person, a, an individual, a unique individual, and in how they deal with with injury. Mosley said on Monday that that Wendell Carter and Gary Harris, for example, are essentially playing without restrictions right now. 
They're essentially back fully, and, and I would suspect that Wendell Carter will reclaim his start, spot in the starting lineup and keep it moving forward, coming out, out of tonight with Mo Wagner suspended. Uh, but but uh, uh, essentially, you know, they're playing without restriction, but even, even Carter would say that he's still working his way back. He's still getting his win back. He's still getting his conditioning back. He's still climbing up over that hill, and while he has played very, very well, that recognition is important. Um, it is important to understand and know that this is a process, that it takes a while for players to get fully up to speed. Some go faster, some go slower. It is truly an individual endeavor. And the difficulty, of course, is the team has to manage that progress along with trying to maintain a winning team. And I think that is an area where the Magic have indeed struggled. And that's what makes this stretch of uh, uh, the stretch with the with practices and with the chance to get guys back. That's what makes this so vital to this team's success. To whether this team is going to be able to take that important next step, that important step forward uh, for this group. It's it's obviously it's it's obviously something that is hard to figure. I, I don't have a stat. I don't have a number. Both Wendell Carter and Gary Harris have played extremely well since they returned. So I don't have a way to quantify what this is. All I know is that, yes, it, it is a coincidence. It is, uh, you know, perhaps correlative that the Magic started to struggle and, and, and this losing streak started to, started to happen as they introduced Wendell Carter and Gary Harris back into the group. Uh, and that is because the lineup stability for this group was so important in building that win streak, just knowing who you're playing with, knowing your rotation. And like I like I argued before, I think the Magic didn't quite build rotations to allow these players to integrate seamlessly with the team. I think they they tried to like jam them in there instead of like saying, okay, Wendell's going to take five minutes from Mo and three minutes from from uh, from Wagner, from Mo Wagner, uh, five minutes from Mo Bamba, five, yeah, there's a lot of Mo's, um, and, and kind of squeeze, and kind of put him in the lineup that way rather than this kind of jamming them in there. And so, you know, I, I think there are ways that this team could prove. But ultimately, these players are going to be part of the rotation. Ultimately, Jalen Suggs and Jonathan Isaac will be part of the rotation, especially with Isaac. The team will need a fairly consistent plan, will need a fairly clear plan for how they want to integrate him back with the team and how they want to use him. This stuff is vital. This stuff is important for this team and, and for the development of these players to get them back into the swing of things quickly. Um, and, and that is an area where the Magic have to improve. And that's what these practices were for. These practices were for, for getting these players up to speed. Trying to shortcut the kind of camaraderie and chemistry that will be needed to succeed. Look, the Magic have had a lot of shifting and rotating lineups this year. Injuries were the story of the first quarter of the season. They're used to playing with shifting lineups, but they are not necessarily successful at it. Like I said, the most... Successful part of the season, the best part of the season so far, the Magic had the same lineup and really did not have any players leaving with injury. They had the same 10, 12 guys the whole time. And so everybody knew their role. Everybody knew when they'd play. Everyone knew they, who they'd be playing with. Upending that has upended the Magic a little bit. There's no denying it. But still, this is important. And so if the Magic hopefully accomplished one thing during these two days of practice or during this time off, it's being able to get those players back fully up to speed and fully integrated into the team. The Magic have been eager to get players back from injury. Certainly, they're, they're feeling that excitement of having Jalen, having Jonathan back, certainly now having Wendell and Gary back. Now they have to get to the work of making them part of the team and winning some of these games. We're going to chat a little bit about tonight's game against the Oklahoma City Thunder coming up here in just a moment. But first... A quick word from our pals at Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis this season. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from pro football to college bowl season to basketball and more. They've got it all at BetOnline.net. Those Paolo Banker Rookie of the Year odds, I think I saw they were like 1-7. to seven, So if you bet $7, you get 1. That's how much of a favorite he is. You can do that still at BetOnline.net. If you love sports podcasts too, you can even find those at BetOnline as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. 
The Orlando Magic start a home back-to-back, a rare home back-to-back, but one that is... Be- I, I've been noticing the league has been doing these a little bit more, but a, a good chance to get back uh, on the winning road against the Oklahoma City Thunder tonight. Yes, Oklahoma City dropped 150 points on the Boston Celtics last night in, in OKC. Um, that's a clear lesson that even without Shea Gilders Alexander, this team can be dangerous. They play scrappy. They play hard. Um, they they play very, very well. They have a big guard in Josh Giddy who's able to kind of manage that offense very, very well. Um, but if you sleepwalk against this team, they will punish you. They will beat you. But still, I still think the Magic are are, are, are the team to be favored in this one. Um, and I think the Orlando Magic have to have to view this as a game to kind of get themselves right, regardless of whether Shea Gildas Alexander plays. Certainly if Shea plays, that, that changes some things. Shea was a late scratch from Tuesday's game uh, with a non-COVID illness. So we'll see if we won't. We, I, at this point, at this at this point, it's about 10 a.m., uh, we don't. I don't know if if Gilgis Alexander will play tonight, um, but you know that's certainly a big factor in, in what we think of this game and what could happen in this game. Um, regardless, the Magic should feel confident. They've had four days off. They've had two chances in practice to kind of get themselves right. This is the kind of game that you have to win. And the kind of game where the Magic struggled a little bit. You know, they didn't get right. They didn't look right against the Los Angeles Lakers coming out of the Christmas break. Hopefully, they learned how to manage a long break to stay sharp get themselves right, kind of firm up those foundations. Because if you can defend a little bit, you know, yes, OKC dropped 150 last night. But, uh, you know, if, if you defend a little bit, if you kind of match OKC's energy, the Magic should be able to out-talent them. You know, Wendell Carter has made a living scoring 30 points against the Oklahoma City Thunder the last two times these two teams have faced each other. Uh, he is, the Magic have a clear advantage on the inside. The, the big difference will be defending without fouling. That was a big issue in the loss of the Thunder earlier this season. Uh, and keeping them out of the paint. Um, the Thunder are not a great three-point shooting, despite what happened last night. Everyone has good nights. It is the NBA. Uh, but you still have to be careful. You know, you can't let that ball get down the hill. You've got to control the tempo of this game. And to me, that's the biggest key for the Orlando Magic tonight. Control the tempo, control the pace, be in control, defend well. And this game is... The Magic have a very good chance of winning this game and a very good chance of taking care of business in this one. Um, this That's how the Magic have to view it. You know, again, Shea is a big factor in this game. So, you know, if Shea plays, that changes things because Shea is such a good jo- does such a good job getting downhill. He, he helped win that. He helped that comeback happen in OKC almost single-handedly because the Magic just couldn't keep him out of the paint, couldn't stop fouling him and sending him to the line, giving him free points. If Orlando is able to defend without fouling, which is the biggest problem that they've had over the last three games... Um, if they defend without fouling and they're able to close out and stop three-point shooting well, they're they're a good defensive team. They could be a good defensive team. So for the Magic, this game is about snapping back into place, snapping back to attention, and getting the job done. It's it's a lot easier said than done. If it's without shade, then you really have to be on it. You have to really kind of put your foot down early, kind of kill momentum. Um, but this is a team that is very capable of doing it. I'm excited to see how the Magic handled this game especially knowing that they'll get everybody back. No Franz Wagner tonight, no Admiral Schofield tonight, no Kevon Harris tonight, no Mo Wagner tonight. Uh, when they get everyone back and put that suspension behind them uh, tomorrow night against Memphis. We'll be back tomorrow to do a complete recap of this game against the Oklahoma City Thunder. But for now, that'll do it for me. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked On Magic. Of course, find me on Twitter at philiprr underscore omd. Subscribe to the podcast and Apple Podcasts. Stitcher, tune in Himalaya, Google Play, Spotify, Odyssey, and all the places in all the podcasts to your podcast and able listening device. For latest on the Orlando Magic, be sure to check out orlandomagicdaily.com. Of course, follow, follow me on Twitter there at omagicdaily. Now that you're done listening to us, go make your second listen game to game NBA. Every moment, every top performance, every result. Locked On Game to Game covers every game from across the NBA with local analysis that only Locked On can deliver. Follow Game to Game on Locked On NBA, available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. That's going to do it for me today, though. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked On Magic. For Orlando Magic Daily and Locked On Magic, this has been Philip Rossman-Reich. We'll see you all again next time for another episode of Locked On Magic.